Hi everyone. So let's talk about the Unit 4 test that's upcoming. So I know that you'd love to see this. This is the test. Ah. So let's go over some review stuff. Um, I won't go over everything specifically that'll be on the test because that's like cheating. But I will um, give you the insight to what you need to know for this test. I'm gonna get to this in a second, but let's talk about some of the basic stuff for the test. Um, you need to, all right, let me go over here so I don't uh, mess these two things up. All right, so the first thing that we're looking to do is you need to know the five formulas. You need to know them inside and out. And what I mean by that is, even though I'm gonna provide you the formulas, you still need to be able to identify what goes where and how to solve them, right? So from a geometric sequence standpoint, <clears throat> we're looking for the first term times the common ratio raised to the n minus one power. And remember that n is what term am I looking for? So if I'm looking for the 11th term, I am just gonna raise this to the 10th power. Now, that should be relatively easy to solve. The problem is when we get into, well, if I give you um, the first term and the third term, how do we do that, right? So let's come up with something pretty simple. Let's say that the first term is two and the third term is, um, I wanna make it a little bit harder actually, so 18. Okay, so how do we find, let's say I wanna find the ninth term? Well, I mean, you could spend time kind of looking at it and figure it out. It is figure out a bowl without doing the math, but you wanna do the math on this in order to get the right answer. So here is what we do for that. You take the third term and you divide it by the first term. Now remember there's a gap here. There should be a second term in here, which we don't know yet. So first step is take the third term and divide it by the first term, or if I give you a second and a fourth term, take the bigger term and divide it by the smaller term. That gives me nine. Then with that number, we are square rooting that number and we're only getting the positive version. This is the common ratio. Three is the common ratio. Now I can use the common ratio and my terms here to find the ninth term that I'm looking for. So remember, the first term is two. Now I know the common ratio is three and I want the ninth term, so I'm just gonna raise it to the eighth power in the calculator and you would evaluate that in the calculator to get your answer. This only works when I'm giving you a term and then I'm skipping one and giving you another one. If I were to give you though, like on the study guide for example, I gave you A3 and then I gave you A4 and you're looking for A1 or maybe another term, you've got to just divide and divide and divide and divide until you get backwards, okay? There is no square root method with this. I'm giving you a term and then the one right after that. So you should be able to take this number and divide it by this term to get the ratio. Okay, that sequences. Um, exponential growth and decay are pretty self-explanatory, right? The one thing I do wanna highlight with uh, exponential growth or decay um, is what happens when I ask you for what the growth rate or the decay rate is, okay? So let's do that. So the formula is A times the quantity of one plus or minus R to the T power. Now, what if I gave you this? Let's say I had 100 as my starting value, and then I had 0 0.082 in the parentheses. I'm gonna ask you whether that's growth or decay, and I'm gonna ask you what the rate of growth or decay is. So the first thing that we need to identify is this is less than one, which means that it's decay. Now, what is the rate of decay? Well, one is built into the formula. So how did I get to this? So I can just do one minus 0.82 in the calculator. I'm gonna get 0.18. That's the rate of decay, it's 18%, okay? That's how we solve that kind of stuff. Conversely, the other is if I have 100 and I say it's 1.07, right? Growth or decay, and what is the rate of growth or decay? This number is bigger than one, it's greater than one. So I know that it's growth, but what is the rate of growth? Well, this one's easy because you can see it. It's 0.07 which is 7%, all right? So just be really, really careful when you do those problems for growth and decay. Half-life, remember that the fraction for the exponent means cycles. So half-life is uh, A 0.5 T, where T represents total time and actual half-life of the element, okay? So just be aware of that. Compound interest is pretty simple. Compound interest, the only thing we have to be careful of with compound interest is the N value, and N stands for how many times interest is compounded in one year. Um, so the words you'll see are annually, 
which means one, semi-annually, which means two, quarterly, which means four, uh, and then you're gonna see monthly. You won't see anything else. And those are the typical ones for actual real life banks. So these are the ones that you're gonna see there, okay? Um, so that kind of wraps up the five formulas. The thing I have to stress to you is please, please, please be careful when you're putting these into the calculator. The answer choices on this test are not close as in like if you rounded it wrong, it'd be wrong. It's close as in they're really good distractors. Like if you put the wrong number in, like say you did quarterly and you put three in for quarterly, there's gonna be an answer choice that has three. So just be really careful on what you're doing. Do your problems twice, okay? Um, so there's a lot of those problems on this test. Growth, decay, the five formulas type stuff. Okay, um, transformations. Again, transformations are pretty simple. So I'll do one and then we'll move on to characteristics and we'll call it. So let's say I had f of x equals um, one half, negative one half times three raised to the one third x plus one power minus four. Okay, three is the base. It's not a transformation. Like on here, if you can see it, two is the base. One fourth is the base. It's the number right before the um, exponent. The negative here indicates an x-axis reflection. The one-half is a vertical shrink of one-half. The one-third is a horizontal stretch of three. The plus one is a left one, and the negative four is a down four. All right, you need to know those, okay? So I might ask you to identify them from here, or I might give you the words and you have to write an equation. All right, let's talk about the um, characteristics. So you're gonna to need to know pretty much all of them, all right? So I'm gonna go over them very quickly here. Um, let me just make sure there isn't anything that I'm missing. Okay, so let's move over. Okay, one thing that I wanna make sure that I stress is the way that the functions look. When the number is an integer, like a whole number below, this is the way the graph looks. Once I do the characteristics of this, I'm gonna show you what the one fourth looks like. This is growth, that's decay. And it's decay because it's less than one. Decay functions look like this, like they're going downhill like a roller coaster, right? All right, so the characteristics of this function here, you need to know that the domain is, and the domain is always negative infinity to positive infinity. It might have that double R, which you saw on the test, uh, practice test. That just means all real numbers, which is that, because they mean the same thing. The range of this function is one of the weird ones, right? So this one was uh, transformed, it was uh, up one. So the range is, this is the one value. Well, there's an asymptote there, right? So it has to be a parentheses one comma infinity because it'll never actually touch one even though it looks like it's going to. Um, intercepts, well, we can see the y-intercept and it's two. So y equals two and the y-intercept is two, but the x-intercept, there are none. Please know that none is the right answer, not zero. Um, and behavior, as x approaches positive infinity, meaning as x goes to the right forever, what is y doing? y approaches, or f of x approaches positive infinity because it's going up. So as x goes right, as increasing, y is increasing as well. The other side of that is as x approaches negative infinity, so this is the one that's weird. As the x values are decreasing, as in going on this way on the line, the y values are approaching one, right? They are approaching this value. They are not ever going to touch that value, nor are they going to go to the other side. They are going to approach that value. Um, increase, decrease is easy. The function is increasing forever, which means negative infinity to positive infinity because it's increasing forever. Even though it doesn't look like it's increasing here, it is increasing, very, very small amounts of increase. And then it goes way up. Positive, negative, I wouldn't worry too much about, but just know that when positive, it's above the x-axis. Well, this is above the x-axis forever. Now, if I were to make this go down a couple of units, just tell me where it crosses the x-axis. So positive and negative is important when you know if there are x-intercepts. You can tell me where it's below and where it's above, okay? So just be aware of that. I don't know if you're gonna see it, but just be aware. Um, and then the asymptote line. So the asymptote line is the barrier line. It's the line where like, it looks like the plane is still on the runway. It's not gonna go up or down, um, where it kind of levels off. So the asymptote line is a line, it's always y equals, and in this case, it's one. Okay, so a lot of things repeat here, all right? Really more um, importantly, just understand these core characteristics. 
Obviously, some other things on here, but I'm not going to go over them. Hopefully, that was informative. I thought it was. Just be very, very careful on this assessment. Please, please, please. Bye. Good luck. Good luck. You're going to need it. Good luck. 10-minute video? Oh, boy.